Hello and happy Sunday. So today I wanted to look at some magazines on the topic of the death of Princess Diana. And also looking through these magazines, we'll see the lens of the past not so long ago. Um, so this is uh, Newsweek also a Newsweek and a People magazine. Um, when Princess Diana died, I was in the military and I was in, uh, on that time I was on leave and I was visiting a friend in Sugarland, Texas. And I got up in the morning and I was brushing my teeth and shaving and she sort of burst in and told me that Princess Diana had been in an accident. And I said, well, that's not good. And I said, is she okay? And they're like, well, they took her to the hospital and then her heart stopped and then she died. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, because that was extremely shocking for anyone, uh, any adult at that time. That was extremely shocking because she was such a fixture in the media. She, I mean, you could not go to the, to the checkout line in the store without seeing Princess Diana. And the fact, the idea that she died was extremely shocking. And I would definitely um, place it next to the crash of the Challenger or Mount St. Helens in terms of how shocking it was. Um, when we look at this magazine, we can see the computers and the technology of 1997. We see how the world has changed. MSNBC News on TV, <laughs> cable. Um, Templeton Investments. And you can see the Mitsubishi Montero. See, to me, this doesn't seem like a long time ago. To some people, this may seem like a long time ago. Um, IBM, see this is a chunky laptop. The end is nigh, but when exactly is nigh? Um, well, well, they were talking about that a lot in 1997 because uh, maybe they said it would end in 2006. Uh, you know, we were getting close to the millennium and people were really nervous about that. This is the millennium notebook. Can you see the year 2000 here? People were very nervous. There were a lot of people who, and I'm not kidding when I say this, there were a lot of people who were stockpiling s supplies, like iodine and drinking water and stuff. Um, I mean, just to get a glimpse of the sort of craziness. If, if you are making plans for the year 2000, here are some predictions that you may want to factor in. Followers of New Age prophet Edgar Casey believe that the North and South Poles will flop, causing worldwide floods and earthquakes. In his bestseller, The Bible Code, former Wall Street Journal reporter Michael Drosnan uses computer analysis of the Torah to divine that World War III may start in that year, or maybe in 2006. He's not sure. In a trailer park in Eula, Texas, 500 or so members of a doomsday sect called the House of Yahweh are hunkering down for the last grim years of life on Earth. Their overseer, a one-time Abilene cop and rockabilly musician named um, Yisrael Hawkins, preaches that the last day started with the satanically inspired Middle East Peace Accords of 1993. The finale will arrive on October 13, 2000, when nuclear bombs will block out the sun and life as we know it will all end. Um, <laughs> didn't happen. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to say this. The date that we have, that we use, the Julian calendar, it's a very arbitrary number. Um, there is some basis uh, when they made it, but the, the, this... We are not certain about a lot of the the meaning of the numbers, and I don't think that it, Nostradamus or any of this stuff, I'm not really a believer in this sort of thing. But to me, it, it seems like a silly thing to think would happen. But a lot of people 
um, were concerned about that. And I, I don't want to, you know, make fun of them, but um, I was never concerned when the year 2000 happened. I had a house party in my house and we, you know, when the new year happened, we were all still there. Um, of course, the new year happened all at different times all around the planet. So that right there should tell you that it's somewhat arbitrary. Um, it'd be a lot scarier if we all, with Paris and New Mexico and everywhere else, all celebrated New Year's at the same time. American Express Financial Advisors. Is it ad for Claritin? And some political cartoons. Who was president? Clinton. That's his vice president, Gore. Um, he, he was still reeling from um, the Monica Lewinsky scandal. Um, some things just look better printed big. <laughs> and then we get to this sad article, Death of a Princess. And this was... Now, I've been to... Um, Paris many times and um, I've been through this Alma Tunnel many times I've been on top of it I've driven through it I've ridden through it um, you wouldn't if you didn't know where you were at you wouldn't think anything of it now if you're on top of it you'll see a big torch flame and that actually it doesn't have anything to do with Diana it just actually is a coincidence that it's there it was there before the accident but when you do go up, you'll see lots of tributes to her. This is some pictures of her with Dodi Fayed uh, on the fateful night. Um, and she was with him in Sardinia. And then she was on her way. She was uh, in Paris with him, staying at the Ritz Hotel. And their driver, Henri Paul, was the allegedly drunk when he drove and slammed into... Uh, you know, a pillar in that tunnel. There's also uh, some word of uh, of a white uh, Fiat rubbing against the car, and then later on they found that particular car burnt out, uh, and the driver dead. There's a lot of conspiracy theories about it. There's also uh, a conspiracy theory because they supposedly they were going to... Um, Used the same tactic to assassinate uh, Slobodan Milosevic. Like M, M16 was going to use uh, the uh, this exact tactic to assassinate him. That was the time of the Kosovo War. So, uh, with using a strobe or something. So, it apparently, this was at least entertained as a method of execution. But I strongly advise to take all of these with a grain of salt. There's a conspiracy theory about almost everything I found. Um, this is the route. This is the Alma Tunnel right here. Ponce de Alma. Which means the bridge, the Alma Bridge. Um, and so she left, at the, she left the Ritz Hotel. They had a decoy car. So all the media was following the decoy car. And Diana, her driver, her bodyguard, and... Dodi Fayette left from an alternate way from behind the Ritz Hotel. They uh, took their car, they went down this route through Place um, Pas de Concorde. Um, Avenue de Champs Elysees. Uh, and that's when the accident occurred. Apparently, the car lost control. Another th reason, possibly, that the car lost control was a lot of um, paparazzi were behind her car on motorbikes, taking snap pictures, and they might have distracted the driver. Um, you know, here's another thing I wanted to point out. In 1997, we never used the word paparazzi. That word didn't even exist, and it didn't even come into the lexicon until after this accident. Just an interesting observation. That word was never used, uh, at least not in America. It might have been used in France. It's Tony Blair, the uh, Prime Minister of England, and he did such a, a really fitting, memorable tribute to Princess Diana. Here's this uh, a typical scene in Diana's life. 
her rushing to a car, dodging the press. And why was she dodging the press all the time? Because there was a lot of drama in the royal family at this time. Uh, Diana had divorced her husband, who is now King Charles. Uh, there was a lot of uh, tabloid coverage of this. Uh, they, there was supposedly an affair she had with a, a British uh, officer, and then his affair with Camilla Parker Bowles, and then the, the drama was just unrelenting. And they were uh, attacking. And here we have a picture of two other people who who uh, were swamped by the media all the time: Jackie Onassis and. JFK Jr., who died, also I believe he died in 97 or 98. I remember I was on base in a parking lot and I heard that he died. Um, Toshiba, see we're at the CD-ROM point now. But you still used, uh, many, many people still use discs, floppy discs. Dodie's to die for that... Uh, didn't age well. Dying for the age of Diana. The woman we loved. A child of divorce, Diana Spencer had an unhappy girlhood. Once she married a prince, things seemed perfect, but they weren't. She was. She still won the hearts of millions. And she was, um, you, you can say she was larger than life. Uh, almost certainly. Everyone on the planet seemingly knew who she was. Even a, a little insignificant person like me. Uh new volumes about her life and she had she was i will say about her she was one of a kind she wasn't bland she wasn't like you know a clone of ten thousand other people she was um and she came off as earnest she really did she had an earnestness about her when you saw her talking or speaking she seemed to be sincere. And that's one reason I think many, many people were drawn to her. This is a big, long ad for life insurance. Several pages they bought in this Princess Diana issue. So they probably paid a pretty penny for that. And there's their final ad. Very grim. And they... No, when you be when you're reading this this article, <laughs> you're gonna be thinking about death because a young, vibrant woman just died. It's 1999. You're dead. What do you do now? I can't think of a more effective way to try to get life insurance. Um, there's a picture of Diana and Charles riding bikes with Harry and William. satellite tv your needs your airline japan airlines that's uh from a interview she did that has since come under a lot of criticism i think it was with martin Bashir. he did an interview with michael jackson and ironically let's just say ironically um Michael Jackson chose Martin Bashir to do an interview with him because he liked the one that was done with Diana, but he didn't realize that Martin Bashir had falsified all kinds of things to get her to talk, and then he ended up making Michael Jackson look terrible, too. Uh, there's an ad for Canon again. Um, they make up a color called blues. Um, Um, more about Diana. Uh, she would visit survivors of landmines and she would visit AIDS patients and she would hug people with AIDS. And she was just, she became somewhat beloved for those types of actions. Um, the little tiny section here talking about Dodi Fayed. His father owned Herod's department store. He doesn't own it anymore. I think he's passed away, but... At that time, he started uh, decorating the department store with all kinds of tributes to Diana and Dodi, his son. He even made a statue in Herod's of them uh, called 
innocent victims and he also had a display case with the ring that Dodie supposedly had presented or was going to present to Diana. Here's more about the royal family. Um, there's Prince Philip, Queen Elizabeth, there's Charles, Andrew, uh, Edward, and Anne, Princess Royal. Um, and here we go to uh, another thing that was happening at that time. It was the uh, Kosovo War that uh, and the Serbians in Serbia. It's an awful, awful time for a lot of people. Both sides suffered. This is put. I'll leave it at that. Just a terrible thing. The CIA lands a big fish. Um, North Korea's latest defector knows plenty, and he's whispering directly into U.S. ears. Um, here's an ad for visiting Singapore. Cut from Strange Cloth. A textile deal widens the Clinton campaign saga. Um, Clinton was a embattled president, to say the least. I got to meet him two times. There's Chelsea Clinton. She's leaving to go to college. Joe Kennedy. Joe Kennedy Jr. I think he's still kind of a, a going concern. Uh, or maybe I'm thinking, Senator, was it Joseph Kennedy Jr.? Or no, is it Bobby Kennedy Jr.? Robert Kennedy Jr.? Maybe Joe died. I can't remember. Uh, Winston Cigarettes. Business reply mail to get your Newsweek subscription here. What's up this fall? Um, Flubber, the movie, remake movie was coming out. Um, Starship Troopers. Um, the Ice Storm, a really depressing movie about the 70s. We got Mad City with Dustin Hoffman, um, Seven Years in Tibet with Brad Pitt, The Devil's Advocate, U-Turn with Jennifer, um, Jennifer Lopez. Music, Janet Jackson, who I've seen in person. Bob Dylan, who I've seen in person. Portishead was quite popular. Uh, I, Queen Elizabeth. Natalie Portman, uh, before The Phantom Menace. She was still pretty young. Memoirs of a Geisha. Saabla, Rock and Roll, You Will Soon, A Musical Invasion from South of the Border. Add for Compact Computers. Mazda MVP. Buick Riviera, diversification gift set, physically fit Barbie, fiscally fit Barbie, I'm sorry, that's some kind of gag, um, Charles Schwab, and TWA, and an ad for the Malibu, my friend had one of those. So, in this news week, we get to Diana's funeral, which was shortly after 
Ooh. shortly after the accident. Then as I cover, we have um, an ad for Saturn Cars. Um, so, is this a mattress or is this a uh, prescription drugs? Yeah, some kind of sleep medication. Healthy choice, frozen meals. Scapegoating George Soros. Uh, U.S. trader whose famously profitable quantum fund has been speculating aggressively in the region. He's a, a he's someone who definitely wants to flatten the earth. Let's put it like that. There was a book called The World is Flat. And a lot of business people really own or really want to take ownership of that concept. The idea that you could go anywhere in the world and see the same things. You'll see the same Cokes, the same uh, Pepsis, the same everything. And we'll have one currency. And it's There's a lot of resistance against that idea, though. And there's a lot of people who think it's an impossibility. After the tragedy, a compelling desire for anything, Diana. Um, the one thing I saw way in the little corner of uh, New Mexico where I was at uh, was the, the Elton John CD that had come out. The Candle in the Wind song. And um, I did buy that because it was going to be going, the proceeds would go to charities that she believed in and another chunky laptop Buick with Sabre here's some celebrities Ellen DeGeneres uh, when you start out, you do what you want to be famous. The town is based on perception, but then it gets to the point where you can't control it. When Anne Heche and I travel, these guys are in the airport with video cameras. They'll say anything to get you mad. Or they'll bring up stuff about my sexuality. I never thought about getting violent, but we did think about putting shaving cream on their lenses. People are so fascinated by fame, they'll go on talk shows, and if they can't be famous... They want to see some famous fail, and uh, it looks like she went down that road. For a while there, she was one of the most beloved celebrities in the world, from her talk show to Finding Nemo and other things, and a, a chain of events happened. Well, Anne Heche's all, uh, awful death and Ellen DeGeneres' very, very cold reaction to it, along with a lot of uh, uh, backstage complaints about her on her show completely destroyed her reputation david Duchovny, another person whose reputation took off a plummet uh sean penn he's kind of considered a wackadoo christy brinkley uh i don't hear too much about her anymore paul riser uh occasionally see him pop up fran drescher she was the president of the screen actors guild Tom Selleck was in Friends around this time. Um, you know, there's that famous photograph that Ellen DeGeneres took at the Oscars. With, and it had Brad Cooper and Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt and Kevin Spacey. And someone did a little, like, study of it to see how many of those celebrities, like, have crashed and burned since then. Um, quite a lot. And they're making fun of Queen Elizabeth here. That she doesn't ever change. Goodbye England's Rose is this perspective. Elton John, Adapting Candle in the Wind, the Requiem dedicated to Marilyn Monroe in 1973. He sang the song at Princess Diana's funeral. They're showing that Queen Elizabeth is always stoic, which it's her job to be stoic. It was her job. A lot of people don't understand the royal family is not like... They are, they are supposed to be stoic. They're not supposed to show emotion. Um, I stand before you today, the representative in grief in a country in mourning before a world all united, not only in desire to care, respects. And I believe that's uh, quotes from 
uh, Queen Elizabeth's um, remarks about the death of Diana. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is from Queen Elizabeth's quotes. And it's a fold out picture of the family mourning with the coffin of Diana. the funeral she basically got like the one of the most uh stately royal royal send-offs there can be and that was very much of a calculated move because she was so popular the royal family knew it would be best not to alienate her or alienate all of her fans so it was a smart move and it was a very um dignified and gracious move uh, despite that there was a lot of um friction between them And we were very, uh, we were crying in America too. It was very upsetting. Here we see some of the the luminaries at the funeral. Uh, Diana's sister Sarah McCorkadale, Mc Mother Frances Shand Kid, and sister Jane Fellows. Um, uh, Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks, Nicole Kidman, Trudy Styler, Sting, and Steven Spielberg. Uh, Muhammad Al-Fayed, Hillary Clinton, Luciano Pavarotti, Donatella, and Santo Versace. That's when Donatella looked somewhat normal. The brother of Diana speaks out. He had a provocative eulogy, uh, and he he was he directly bl blamed the press for her. In a coffin draped with the queen's colors and decked with flowers, Diana is carried into the somber congregation. How to get into college? Newsweek. Only a small percentage of these students will get into the college of their choice. This is uh, the la the scenes leading up into the car crash. There's Diana at the Ritz Hotel. There's Dodie. That's Trevor, uh, the, the bodyguard. Um, oh, what was his name? Trevor something. Um, I think that's Henri Paul. Dodie and Diana on the beach. And there's some of the the um, actions of Diana that made her beloved in the world. Visiting children with cancer and AIDS and coming off as generally a nice person. The new Ultima. I want to see more. Oh, you can get a videotape from Nissan. Henri Paul with a drink in this undated photo seems sober at the Ritz. Uh, there's there is a lot of conspiracy theories about it. This is about his drug, alcohol level, and stuff. A lot, there's a theory that when they took his blood in the morgue that um, that it, it was full of carbon monoxide and then some people think that maybe they had taken accidentally or intentionally taken blood from another deceased person and um, and not him there's a lot of there's a lot of rumors like that we I mean we don't know just uh you know, you just don't know what happened. I, I, I don't know uh, if any of those conspiracy theories have merit or um, if it just makes things worse. Growing up without her, there's um, Prince William.
and Terry, the Spare, who's now in America with Meghan Markle. Just as she was gaining sympathy, Camilla Parker Bowes must retreat to the sidelines. This time it may be for good. Well, that didn't turn out to be the case. Why Charles should go. To maintain their credibility, the Windsors must name Prince William heir apparent by Harold Brooks Baker. That also didn't come to pass. Diana looking very upset. In that picture. How she was covered in the in the press every waking second of her life. Go mad with Compat uh plus before you get into megabytes, ask about saving mega bucks. Plus you get a video enhanced CD single from the Mad About You, the Final Frontiers soundtrack. Mad About You was really popular, and then it just sort of became forgotten. Uh, no more photos. This is uh, one of the many mi memorials to Diana. Ronald, Nancy Reagan and Diana. Worldwide wake. They're the early stages of the internet too, discussing how she's being covered on their the infant in internet at that point. Little sister of the poor. Oh, this is Mother Teresa. She died last week in Calcutta, just days after her 87th birthday. Um, it's sad that we lost Mother Teresa and Diana so close together. But obviously, Diana overshadowed that a lot. As Senate hearings resume, the vice president falls deeper and deeper into the fundraising mess. Al Gore, who's now mostly known for an inconvenient truth. And we get a little bit about the Jean Benet Ramsey case. Um, this is a picture of the letter. That was a whole whole other can of worms in the late 90s when Jean Benet Ramsey was found dead in her house. And many, many people suspected the parents, especially um, this is um, here's a breakdown of this ransom note. And to go through this breakdown, they have it numbered by the different parts that are suspicious. Part one, it says, claiming to be, well, let me read it first. Mr. Ramsey, listen carefully. We are a group of individuals that represent a small foreign faction. We respect your business, but not the country that it serves. At this time, we have your daughter in our position. She is safe and unharmed. And if you want her to see 1997, you must follow our instructions to the letter. You will withdraw $118,000 from your account. $100,000 will be in $100 bills and the remaining $18,000 in $20 bills. Make sure that you bring an adequate size at attache to the bank. When you get home, you will put the money in a brown paper bag. I will call you between 8 and 10 a.m. tomorrow to instruct you on delivery. The delivery will be exhausting, so I advise you to be rested. If we monitor you getting the money early, we might call you early to arrange an earlier delivery of the money and hence a earlier pickup of your daughter. Any deviation of my instructions will result in the immediate execution of your daughter. You will 
also be denied her remains for proper burial. The two gentlemen watching over your daughter do not particularly like you, so I advise you not to provoke them. Speaking to anyone about your situation, such as police, FBI, etc., will result in your daughter being beheaded. If we catch you talking to a stray dog, she dies. If you alert bank authorities, she dies. If the money is in any way marked or tampered with, she dies. You will be scanned for electronic devices, and if any are found, she dies. You can try to deceive us, but be warned that we are familiar with law enforcement countermeasures and tactics. You stand a 99% chance of killing your daughter if you try out to outsmart us. Follow our instructions and you stand a 100% chance of getting her back. You and your family are under constant scrutiny as well as the authorities. Don't try to grow a brain, John. You are not the only fat cat around, so don't think that killing will be, a diff will be difficult. Don't underestimate us, John. Use that good southern common sense of yours. It is up to you now, John. Victory SBTC. So, point one. Claiming to be part of a terrorist organization is a common ruse in ransom notes. Van Zant says he sees no linguistic evidence to imply a foreign connection. And they're speaking about Clint Van Zant, an FBI behavioral science guy. Two, the writing in the first paragraph is noticeably shakier than at the end. Compare how the word that is written in the first and last paragraphs. Richard suspects that the writer could sustain a disguised handwriting style. Couldn't sustain a disguised handwriting style. Newsweek has learned that John Ramsey's bonus in 1995 totaled $118,117.50. The writer's unusual use of the decimal point and zeros hints to Van Zant that he or she may have seen the bonus check and was reflecting the style in which the number was written. Um, this phrasing and words like attaché are uncommon in ransom notes. They suggest to Richards an educated writer, perhaps familiar with the world of business. Despite threats of violence throughout the note, Van Zant says it is a softness suggesting its author was a woman or perhaps a genteel man. The letter is full of commanding phrases like this one about immediate execution. To Van Zant, they point to an author used to exerting authority over others. The line, if we catch you talking to a stray dog, she dies, echoes the movie Dirty Harry, as do other phrases. Van Zant says this is a novice trying to sound like an experienced criminal. The note's salutation is formal, but here the overall tone becomes more familiar and casual. Van Zant thinks the writer may be suggesting a personal acquaintance with John Ramsey. Richard says the ransom note is one of the longest he's ever seen, indicating either that the author had enough time to carefully craft the letter, or there's not a genuine demand for ransom. And finally, with its connotations of revolution, the closing victory Harks back to the connection to foreign powers. SBTC may be another attempt to sound foreign. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that. Alright, Dis floppy disks. It's Newsweek Diana Celebration of Her Life. Nice pretty picture of her though. Born in Israel. A week of sheer fakery. Hyperbole about a deceased person expands to fill the vacuum of the person's significant. Uh, this guy... He's complaining about all the attention basically the Diana was getting. It's kind of a cranky article. Um... Okay, the next one we're going to look at is actually from 2006. So this was, uh, you know, nine years after after the accident. And, and you wouldn't see Nick Lachey on the cover um, or Tom and Kate. But uh, this is shocking new evidence. A French spy, a diamond ring, and a mysterious $120,000 payment. Why British investigators can't close their case. So we're, we've moved up a few years here. Now we got Donald Melania here, a little younger. Um, Sharon Stone.
Christina Aguilera works the pinup look at a fashion show for provocateur lingerie. I think that's Danica Patrick, yeah, on a secret advertisement. Uh, life takes determination, life takes visa. Uh, Star Tracks. Jessica Simpson. <laughs> you don't hear about her anymore. Uh, let's see. Evil Long Grey, Vilma Valderrama, the guy from the 70s show. Um, Angelina Jolie. And Matthew McConaughey. Daryl Hannah. Bill Murray, surfing. Tom Hanks looking all bohemian in New York. Brooke Shields, pregnant. Rebecca Romaine is Pepper Dennis. Hmm, I don't remember that show. Katie Couric. And Elmo. Paula Abdul and her new boyfriend. There's Natalie Portman, a little bit older than what we saw. Memoirs of a Geisha. Big star little film, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Passed away. Tori Spelling will always be the girl on Dean McDermott's arm. Hello, sister, goodbye life. With Lacey Chabert and Wendy Malik. Don't remember that either. Uh, Dr. McSpeedy. Yeah, I was actually, had gotten tickets to... Um, attend it was a conference and i was going to have a, a meet and greet with him uh while he was racing but I, I we ended up not going but i had a chance to meet him and see his race car um uh, patrick yeah patrick uh dimsey is that larry the cable guy everyone looks so much younger in this i mean this wasn't that long ago was it Frankie Valley. They still had those old cranberry ads then. I thought that was much earlier. The yeah, yeah, yes. Chrissy Hind. Oh, it's a perfume. One of those perfume things, I think. I don't know. I don't know what this is. Maybe something was cut out. And all the depression medicine ads. There were so many back then. I don't think you see them as much anymore. Puff Daddy, Cheryl Crow. Uh, this is Nick Lachey. He was Jessica Simpson's husband or something at that time, and now you never hear from him about him anymore. That was fifteen minutes ended. Um, trading races. On FX's new reality series, Black White, two families, one black, one white, swap skin colors and share a home for six weeks. The cast talk to people's Amy, Elisa, Keith. Um, I can't imagine that this ever happened, but apparently it did. And this certainly wouldn't happen today. 
I never heard of that. Okay, here's the new questions. Uh, an official probe into Diana's death is in its third year and troubling new mysteries have emerged. People goes inside the investigation. Did the palace want Diana dead? Were Diana and Dodie engaged? Was Diana's chauffeur a secret agent? Was Henri Paul drunk at the time of the crash? Were secret agents spying on Diana? Was Diana's body embalmed? Did a car bump Diana's Mercedes just before the crash? So this is a picture of that Fiat. Um, yeah, these are the questions that have been haunting conspiracy theorists. Was, um, was this a, a professional hit? What do William and Harry think happened that night? Um... One of the main, Dodi, uh, Muhammad Al-Fayed was one of the main people leading the conspiracy accusation. He felt like um, he even uh, lost his royal charter and he burned it from Herod's. I don't know if they ever got it back, but he basically declared war against the royal family. South Park versus Scientology. And they, Isaac Hayes quit the show. It was Donald Trump, and I think Baron William, yeah, when Baron Trump was born, eight pounds, eight ounces. Um, interesting, you can see an ad for Donald Trump here, and it's not full of hatred in a magazine. Things have changed so much. Um, Fatal Desire, a new original movie inspired by a true story with Anne Hayes and Eric Roberts. Anne Hayes is dead. No. Um, it's anything but cute. Interesting. This was, you know, 18 years ago. And yeah, things have really changed. Uh, William and Kate Middleton, but look how young. Last I heard from her, she had some kind of abdominal surgery. And she's... Definitely staying out of the limelight. Here's um, Andrea Yates, the Texas mother who drowned her children. And then her crazy husband remarried. Um, how Etta got her groove back. At once 400 pounds, at last singer Etta James is less than half the woman she used to be, thanks to gastric bypass surgery. I love that song, At Last. It's a beautiful song. Catching up with Chris Kattan. Uh, he was on Saturday Night Live at that time, or had just left. Let's see, Prince. And he was still alive. Happy birthday, Julia Stiles. Never, I don't know, she just kind of faded away. Shannon Elizabeth faded away. Russell Crowe is totally different now. Uh, two moms, a secret pact, and a baby boy. Did this man kill his wife? Shelly Tyre died when scuba diving in Tortola. Was it an accident or did her husband, David Swain, tear off her mask and hold her under? Huh, that happens quite a bit. There was one case like that from Alabama where a photograph was captured of her. I don't know if they've resolved that yet. Lost Jorge Garcia. When Lost was a big deal. Haven't heard from him a lot lately either. Brooke Burns broke her neck. Bruce Willis, and sad what's happened to him with aphasia and dementia. You no, know, things change really fast, don't they? This was only 2006, and look at all of the changes that have happened. Let's 
Cindy Crawford, Lindsay Lohan, Alicia Silverstone, Penelope Cruz, Lucy Liu, Britney Spears, Tom Cruise, Zoe Deschanel. Don't hear from her much either. Ola Cassini. And we'll close with a Wendy's ad. So this was um, just three examples of how Princess Diana was covered in magazines. Uh, now you might see how she's being covered in that show about the royal family, which this last season hasn't been very good in my opinion. Uh, I like the first few seasons, but I don't think they're handling the recent stuff very well. But uh, either way, um, this was an interesting thing to look at. So uh, thanks for coming and sitting with me, and I hope you like my channel. Please subscribe and click the bell icon. Leave me a thumbs up and a comment, and all of that helps very much. Until next time, bye.